Uh, hi all, good evening once again. So we'll be starting with this webinar. So uh, we have arranged this webinar to uh, you know, walk you through the IMS module, which has been newly released by the GSCI uh, by the government. So uh, I hope my screen is visible, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you. Uh, so you must uh, aware of the new uh, car existing I am uh, this GSTR 2B flow, right? So whenever your vendor files a GSTR 1, it becomes part of your GSTR 2A and on 14, the 2B is generated against the document. So this is the current flow which you are following for the ITC claim and your GSTR CD filing part. So here what was happening was when the vendor used to file an incorrect return. Like the ITC could be on a higher or a lower side. So you'd had to reverse it on a temporary basis and have a vendor communication in place. And you'll have to constantly chase your vendor for you know, correcting those uh, amounts and filing an amended return. So this was causing, you know, um, a huge difficulty for the receivers and to maintain this track. So now I am is coming into picture. We have created a layer in between before uh, the GSTR 2B is generated for that particular return. So what IMS will be doing is whenever your vendor uploads any file onto the GSTR and portal or files the GSTR 1 return, it directly do not flow to your GSTR 2B. It will be flown to the IMS portal. So wherein you will be given an option of accepting, rejecting or keeping the particular document in pending status for the further actions. So the documents uh, which are pertaining to your GSTR 1 or for, through the GSTR 1A return will be first flown to the IMS portal. So this will be the flow wherein on IMS, the ITCs which you feel are you know correct and the ITCs which you want to claim in the return, you can simply accept those or which you feel you do not want to claim in the current return. You can keep it, keep those documents in the pending status and carry those ITCs forward to the next return and you also have an option of rejecting the documents. So when you reject uh, the document, they will be removed from your IMS module and will not be part of your 2B. So in this scenario where the IMS is there in the picture, anything which you're accepting or the documents on which you're not taking any of the three actions will be uh, moved to your GSTR 2B on 14th. So the 2B will be generated on 14th by default, even if you take an action on it or do not take an action on it. But here, with the IMS being there, your GSTR 2B window has been extended not uh, to till the time you file your GSTR 3B for the return. So from 14th till the time you file your GSTR 3B, you have an option of you know, uh, regenerating your GSTR 2B. So once you have accepted your record, and uh, but you have not filed the return, so you have an option of altering those uh, you know records as well. You can simply reject them, keep it in pending, or reject a document and accept it. So vice versa, you can do multiple action and generate the to be on demand. Post your uh, like post 14 till you file your 3B. So this gives you a larger window of reconciling the document, having a vendor communication, and then later on filing your GSTR 3B. So this was the entire flow of how IMS has no eased out the receivers and like the ITC claiming part and everything. So uh, whichever the amendment and the 1A will be flown to your IMS. However, the GSTR 2B will be formed for the next return itself. So the data which is coming through the GSTR 1A. However, you have given an uh, you have an option of taking the action against it. So uh, this was the entire overview of the IMS model, which has been recently introduced and it has been applicable from for, uh, 14th of October and documents from 1st of October. So for your this GSTR 3B return on 20th, the IMS will be uh, you know, in place. So this is a voluntary uh, you no know, task for the, uh, for the registrants. They do not have to mandatorily follow it. However, if you do not taking any action on the IMS portal, by default, it will be the current flow. Anything which your vendor is filing in the GSTR 1 will be part of your GSTR 2B for the next return. In case you do not wish to have the IMS in picture, but however, we suggest that you 
you know, start practicing it for a few locations because eventually for the next year onwards, uh, it will be becoming mandatory. So to do not uh, you know, ease out the process, you can start with the IMS uh, part wherein you can take the action, keep the documents pending and reject the ITCs. So just to ease out your return, just your CG return part. So if you have any questions related to the IMS, which I have explained at the uh, moment and the process which needs to be followed for the IMS, no uh, using for taking the actions or anything, you can simply raise your hand. We'll be unmuting you to care, take up a question. Uh, yes, Raj Mohan, I've unmuted you. Uh, you can just uh, speak up. Madam, uh, when we start the program, there is no voice. That's why I raised my hand. Okay, okay, awesome. Okay. I hope I was audible, right? No, my yeah, 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 yeah. All, all right, all right, thank you. Uh, yes, Suraka, you can just unmute yourself and ask the question. Okay, so uh, good afternoon. So uh, my query is related to this opening balance. So whatever the credit that is uh, pending for availing in the books. Okay, uh, because uh, what I understand that the system is started from October. Okay, so the invoices issued in the October that only will be appear in this IMS module. So what about the uh, invoices that is pending, you know, like September or August or any uh, any pending invoices before October? So what are the provisions? are already part of your 2P, right? Which were already part Correct. of your 2P Correct. in the previous return. So those Correct. you have already, uh, that has already been part of your 2P and anything which you have not claimed, you ultimately would have reversed in 4B2, right? So in okay. that case, you'll have to follow the same process that you're using currently. Okay, but but uh, uh, whether that invoices will be appear in the IMS module for uh, no, claiming? No, no, no. Those documents will not be appearing. Only the documents which are from 1st of October will be part of your IMS. Okay, then uh, then how to claim that old uh, uh, invoices then? So those uh, ITCs, uh, yes, yes, Tapas. So hi, uh, for the old invoices, sir, let's say you had uh, seen that invoice in your GSTR 2B, but you mm -hmm. were not uh, in a position to take credit for whatever reasons, either you had not received yes. the invoice or goods had not received. Correct. Those invoices, if you had followed Circular 170 properly, in <laughs> that case, you would have uh, taken the ITC in table 4FI and would have temporarily reversed it. In that case, as and when this invoice now appears, you can uh, accept it and take the credit. You just have to show it in uh, clause 4D1 as a reavailment. If you had, let's say you had not followed circular 170, it was there in 2B, mm -hmm. but you had not taken the credit. Now when mm -hmm. it appears, uh, sorry, it, it was anyways there in your GSTR 2B at that time, but you did not take the credit. Now mm -hmm. when it becomes a part of your purchase yes. register and you are able to match it, you can still go uh, into your GSTR 3B and take that credit additionally. So while the government is going to, uh, they are saying that whatever amount is there in in the GSTR 2B through the IMS, that should be your final credit. But they are also aware of this fact that because it is being implemented in the middle of the year, there are bound to be invoices which are there for the period April uh, 24 to September 2024, correct, correct. which would have appeared uh, earlier. So first answer to your question, is there a system of reporting any opening balance? No, there is no system for reporting opening balance. If there was an invoice earlier in 2B, which you are reconciling now, you had not taken the credit earlier, you can very well take it right now. It would be outside IMS. It would not be triggered within the IMS. Okay, understand. So so that means there is a separate provision that is available in the, in the 3B to avail this uh, pending credit, right? 3B, so whatever in the GSTR 3B, the credit will get auto populated first mm -hmm. on the basis of your GSTR 2B, but you can still go and change manually just like you are doing currently. It is not going okay. to be frozen as of now. What my colleague was saying that the government is planning to freeze these returns. They had come up uh, with a, with an advisory on uh, uh, 17th of October. So the first advisory in the morning of 17th October that they raised, uh, they said that we are going to lock the GSTR 3B returns outward and inward board the data. But in the evening, they modified uh, the guidelines saying that because IMS is something which is very new and it is optional, we are going to lock the outward data in GSTR 3B from January itself. The inward data we will be locking later on. So as advised, I think slowly and gradually they would make IMS mandatory and then lock the GSTR 3B. Also, one point to add, uh, I think your question is done, sir. Yes. 
yes yeah. it is okay. done so j- thank sure you. thank you thank you very much so just one thing to uh, add here is uh, while ims is mandatory uh, is optional right now uh, we have to still see the impact of whatever is happening so it's not that if you are not take, doing anything in the ims your 2b gets automatically generated what the government is doing in that case is on the 14th of the month if you have not taken any action the ims system marks all the invoices as accepted it is considered as auto accepted and then these transactions are pushed to the gstr 2b in that case one has to also see that whether these auto acceptance can uh, be considered as uh, acceptance under the other provisions as well so let's say you have an msme vendor and if if you are accepting an invoice then you have to follow the guidelines and make the payment within uh, the prescribed number of days if now these systems are being accept auto accepted uh, on the ims portal without you taking any action can you still tell the supplier and say that i want to dispute your invoice that is one of the points that comes in so while it is optional the system is getting auto accepted whether it's really an optional thing where certain amounts are not being allowed to keep pending uh, the impact of credit note etc those are all scenarios which one have to consider before taking a position that it's really an optional and we can conveniently ignore it which which should not be the case yeah please continue thank you uh, thank you tapas so adding on to that point uh... there are two point is uh, so whenever your vendor is raising a credit note uh, you have an option only to accept or reject those transactions so you cannot keep a credit note in the pending status so ultimately you'll have to take an action whether uh, to accept or reject the credit note and also the other point being uh, so the records which were currently being part of your gstr to be that is the reverse charge transactions and the itcs which are en- ineligible in your gstr to be those these two transactions will be not will not be flown to your ims they will be directly populated in your gstr 3b so you do not have an action of accepting or rejecting or pending these set of documents that is your reverse charge that gstr 2b under which that is a reverse charge and the itcs which are ineligible all right uh, if any of you has any queries you can raise your hand or else we can move ahead with the portal demonstration uh yes raj mohan you can unmute yourself Uh, ma'am, uh, actually, uh, like a rent a cab, uh, some kind of uh, ineligible thing in uh, 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 reflected in to be to be. Okay. Ineligible. Uh, so, uh, but uh, we are in purchase register. We are not uh, tag any tag uh, GST uh, GL. So, th- this this kind of things. So, uh, what will do? Uh, so, ineligible in your PR or uh, ineligible in the GST or to be data. Uh, ineligible uh, yes, in to be data, so they are all they find uh, they filed and uh, reflected in to be now, ma'am. So that yes, will be so uh, that, that will be lied in to uh, be. Uh, I think Kunal, uh, yes, Kunal, you could answer the question. So, so all the ineligible credits will continue to like you know float uh, to IMS, and so that it will float to your to be in to be. That can be um, ITC can be ineligible only for two reasons. One is that the invoices of the previous period, or the place of supplies of uh, another state. Rest all things, uh, it's for you to disclose it as ineligible in four B two. Sorry, four B one. So I think okay. the question is that uh, in case of ineligible credits, they are not booking the separate GST amount in their purchase register. Is the is that what the question is, sir? Yeah, yes, sir, right, sir. Yeah. So then, in that case, I mean, there are only two ways of looking at it. If you know for sure that these are ineligible credits, you have to accept these items in your IMS and then show a permanent reversal. What happens through IMS is that once you reconcile, you know that this invoice pertains to you. There is a reject function which is available, in which case you can uh, reject an invoice which is not pertaining to you. But in case of rent a cab, etc., where credit, ex- credit rent a cab, or probably food expenses, where if you have any of your employee has gone into a hotel and stayed there, and also has right, right, uh, 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 incurred food expenses, which are credits is not allowable. If you are not booking GST expense amount separately in your books of accounts, naturally reconciliation will not happen. And because reconciliation is not happening. you will not be in a position to verify whether this invoice pertains to you or not in that case ideal scenario is that you accept these invoices and then in your gst in your gstr 3b you show these amounts as a permanent reversal that is one way of looking it 
Second okay. is you can reject this invoices, but that is not advisable. In fact, the FAQ also says that rejection has to be only in those cases where invoices are actually uh, not pertaining to you or has so, some gross uh, problems, yes. etc. So, so be... this has to be, uh, and in fact, in, in under income tax also, you are required to report how many of your uh, purchases are from registered, from composition dealers, etc. So it is high mm -hmm. time that some processes are changed and we start recording uh, uh, these uh, purchases along with the GST items that would help you in GST as well as income tax compliances. I hope okay, that answers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tapas. Thanks, Kunal. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, Yogita. Uh, Yogita, you can unmute yourself. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah, ma'am. Actually, I have one question. We have some provisions amount on the monthly basis, and we book. Uh, we have already booked in our ERP system. So, how do we uh, how do we show in the GSTR to be or how to be accept or how to be reject? I don't. I am not aware about it. Could you please explain a little bit? You will have to uh, explain more as to what do you mean by provisions. Actually, so we have some royalty we have to pay to the head office. So we will we will book the royalty amount in the books on the monthly basis. This head office is in India or outside India? Outside of India. So uh, in case of outside India, the amounts don't come into IMS. You have to keep paying the reverse charge mechanism uh, uh, as it is. And I think we are focusing on this uh, uh, session on IMS only. We will reach out to you separately and discuss this query. Okay, fine. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yes, Palani. Uh, you can unmute your mic. Uh, yes, Mahesh. Mahesh, your line has been unmuted. You can uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. Sorry. Uh, uh, hello. N now I hear you. Yes, you are audible. Yes. Okay. Okay. So my question is that uh, means IMS facilities only for the other than reverse charge uh, invoices we have to accept or reject. Correct. Right now, yes, reverse charge invoices are not covered in IMS. Uh, and what about the import cases? Import also, yes. Import, import also means... Import, ISD and reverse charge mechanism are not a part of IMS right now. They are working okay. on it then, and the GSTN has informed that they will bring it uh, into the system later on. Okay, thank you. Uh, Palani ji, your line has also been unmuted. Uh, you can unmute yourself and... Uh, Ask your question if you can hear us. I think we can go ahead, Rishma. All right. So, if there are uh, no other questions, I'll move ahead with the portal demonstration. Uh, so, Hope my screen is visible. Okay. Yes, Rishma, uh, it is so visible. As per, okay, thank you. Uh, so as per GST norms, we have incorporated the IMS functionality in the existing portal itself. So you can find the module under GST, uh, your IMS. So uh, same as the GSTR 2A to be reconciliation that we have, that we do against the purchase register, the same functionality has been done in the IMS uh, module as well, wherein you will be uploading your purchase register and downloading the IMS data and running with the reconciliation. So to begin with, uh, for downloading the IMS data into portal, we have two options. Either you can download it on the demand basis, um, you can come to the IMS module and download the GST uh, IMS data from the GST and portal, or else we have an option of automating the process as well. So that feature is available under managed organization entities. So here again, the location, I'll have to go to the hamburger menu, go to edit entities, and you'll have to enable 
the auto sync IMS module functionality. This will have to do it with all the locations and update the settings here. So once this is done, just you'll have to make sure that for the auto sync or the manual syncing to work, your GSC session needs to be active at all times. So if it's expired, then the auto syncing and the manual syncing will not be happening. So this is the one time activity that you will have to do for the auto syncing. So your first step would be to download the IMS data into the SIGNET portal. And the second is to upload your purchase register. So if you're currently doing it for the GSCR 2A to the reconciliation, so there is no need to upload uh, no, the purchase register separately. We'll be using the same purchase for the IMS recon as well. So before you do the reconciliation, we have uh, you know, added few settings as well, which is quite similar to our reconciliation setting. So this is available under the settings icon here in the reconciliation module. IMS. So the exclude matching criteria match on date difference, match by tolerance, near match. Uh, uh, so all these filters are quite similar to the uh, G recon GSCR 2A to the reconciliation filters. So based on the business requirements, you can enable or disable these settings and put in the tolerance limit. So once this is done, uh, your, this is a one time activity that you will have to do. And once this is done, you can go ahead and do the reconciliation on portal. So before you do the reconciliation, we have also automated the action uh, taking process as well. So wherein you do not have to manually do take the actions again, the match, mismatch or match by tolerance, you know, sections. So this uh, functionality of automating the action has been covered under the settings module itself. So here you have to just enable this particular IMS action. So there are two options uh, which is available currently. So first is the default uh, action option. So wherein once the reconciliation has been done, automatically if you wish to accept, reject or keep the document and pending, this action will be taken on all the documents. Like it will not bifurcate the reconciliation sections. On all sections, the action will be taken based on the default uh, setting here once the reconciliation has been done. The second option is to customize the uh, like the action process. So again, match, match by tolerance, mess match, neo match, you can have a separate action tag there. So for match, if you want to accept it, match by tolerance, you want to reject, uh, sorry, accept it, GSC only, that is against which the uh, purchase data is not available. If you wish to keep it in pending, mismatch cases, if you wish to keep it in pending or accept it against the reasons as well. So in mismatch also, that could be multiple reasons that the taxable tax, POS, or IPC amounts, or sorry, IGST, CGST tax amounts are not matching. So against each mismatch reason, we have given an uh, option of uh, you know, putting a different actions. So if there is a mismatch and the reason is uh, GST, like the tax amount is different, you can accept or reject or keep the document in pending. So the same functionality we have given for near match as well. So against each potential cases, you know, we have given an option of keeping the documents in the different different action uh, no, settings. So this this also again will be a one time activity. Once this is done, you can add multiple uh, you know, reasons as well. Multiple scenarios can be covered here. So once this is done, you'll have to save those changes. So this again will be a one time activity or else based on the business requirement, you can change the settings as well. So once this is done, you will be coming back to the IMS module. So once the setting is done, your IMS data is synced and the purchase has been imported. The next step is to do the reconciliation. So this will happen from the reconciliation action reconcile now. So once the reconciliation has been done, based on the actions which you have set in the settings uh, module, the prospective uh, action of accept reject pending will be taken against the document. So in case you do not wish to automate the process, we have a manual and an Excel form as well available wherein through UI, uh, you can take a bulk action. Wherein, uh, if you wish to accept or, or reject the match, match, mismatch, match by tolerance, you can simply have to take the action against the sections and you'll have to apply the filter. So before that, if you wish to preview the number of documents and their respective values against which you're taking the action, we have a preview option also available. So you can preview the, doc the document count, the values, and take the actions uh, post that. Once this is taken, uh, the respective action will be reflected here on the page. 
and the sec the uh, the second step of the manual action is via Excel. You can download the Excel, take the action on the in the Excel, and you can upload the same file back. Uh, so that the Excel itself, whatever actions you have taken, would be reflected on the portal. So once the action has been taken, you can or your your next step is to push the document, push this action status back to the IMS. So through that can be done through this push uh, IMS action to GSA portal. So once this is done, we have a uh, like you'll have to push it and you'll have to generate the two B. The next step is once the data has been successfully pushed to the IMS portal. We'll have to generate the GSTR to be on demand, and uh, we also have an option of generating the to be and syncing it at the same time. So uh, you'll have to simply enable this particular sync GSTR to be option and download the data, so that your GSTR to be will be generated and synced on on the Signet portal and can do the further reconciliation on demand. So this activity can be done prior to 14th, after 14th, till you file your GSTR to be. So this is the entire process of taking the action. So this can be done on a multiple world, and this can be done multiple times. That is, if you have taken any action and you want to alter it, we also have an option of uh, changing the section or or changing the action section as well. So if you have accepted it but you want to keep it in pending, simply you'll have to change the action of the document and you'll have to push this document again to the the uh, GST portal, and you'll have to generate your 2B again. So this is this process can be done in number of times until you have filed your 3B for the current period. So anything which you have rejected will not be part of your 2B, and the, the documents which you have kept in pending will be carried forward to the next returns. And also, additionally, we have given an option of altered as well. So as I said, uh, you can take this action of you know. Uh, Freezing the document and generating the to be before 14th as well as before uh, 14th and before 11th also, like before your vendor has filed their GSTR one. So uh, let's take a scenario wherein it was available on 10th, the data was available on portal on uh, the government portal and it was it flowed to your IMS data, but the vendor had not filed their GSTR one. So, but the data was matching with your purchase, so you had accepted the doc uh, accepted that particular record. But during the filing, your vendor must have you know, changed some values or any details in the document, and he had filed his uh, GSTR one. So in that case, we will give you a tag here that this particular document has been altered. So here it will be available where the action status is there that your previous taken an action on it. But during the filing, your the vendor has changed something, some data in the record. So we'll give you a heads up that something has been changed so that you can take. Respective action against that particular document. So you also have an option of downloading the Excel as well from here, and we also have given a vendor-wise reconciliation. Wherein against the particular vendor, you will be able to see the records which have fallen into the respective reconciliation section and the actions which you have taken against the particular document. So in vendor reconciliation, also we have given the same option. Of uh, pushing the record and generating the tool, it, it makes it easier for you if you wish to do, uh, you no, know, a re recon or taking the action against a you no know, particular vendor. If you wish to do a reconciliation and you want to precede the IMS of the any particular vendor, this you can use this particular vendor reconciliation uh, module for that. And uh, we also have the reconciliation summary as well available, wherein you will get an overview of the number of records which have fallen to the respective. Action uh, sections and the document types, like if it is a B two B invoice, uh, whether it is an amendment, credit note. So all this section bifurcation and the respective counts at a summary level will give you so that you can uh, take the actions in the documents. You'll be able to see the documents which are in the no action in the GST and in system. Here it states that on GST and portal, how many records are there? On the Signet portal, how many records are there? So this bifurcation is also available so that you can take an immediate action on those set of documents. So uh, this was the entire uh, you know process flow of how to do the reconciliation and freeze your IMS and generate the to be on demand through Signet portal. So in case you have any queries related to the portal demonstration, you could uh, raise your hands.
ये श्वेता मैम दिस रिकन्सलेशन इज वेर नो सो एक्चुअली वी आर पुशिंग अवर डाटा इन द मंथ ऑफ अक्टोबर इज नॉट ओनली अक्टोबर डाटा विल बी अवेलेबल इट माइट बी अवेलेबल फ्रॉम द अप्रिल ऑनवर्ड्स सो वी हैव टू सेलेक्ट फॉर द मंथ फॉर द जी एस टी आर टू बी वेर इट इज स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम द अप्रिल टू टिल अक्टोबर मंथ ओके सो हाउ द दिस रिकन्सलेशन विल हेल्प बिकॉज आई हैव वी हैव नेवर यूज एंड वी आर स्टार्टिंग द फ्रेश रिकन्सलेशन विद द सिग्नेट so we does not have our purchase data this is the only fresh data what we are uploading in the october month and this october will be containing from the maybe possibilities are there uh, april april invoices also it may contain in the october so such such scenario how we have to reconcile okay, uh, so from this platform cases, uh, understood your question so you are not using currently uh, you not using signet for the 2b reconciliation as well right so there would be two phases when we talk about the ims uh, functionality your ims data will be available only from for the october from the october return only uh, reshma, uh, the ims data will be available reshma hi molly here yes yes molly uh, can you just go a little slower a uh, few clients are requesting all, that all right all right yeah thank you Okay. I'm still not clear, madam. Actually, no, no, no. Clear. I haven't covered your point yet. Okay. So yes, when we talk about the IMS functionality, so IMS uh, data will only be available for the from the October return. However, your purchase you can upload from April onwards on the uh, like the records which you have not cleaned, which are available, which are part of your purchase. when you're doing the ims reconciliation so from april onwards you can upload your pr the like the pr which you have not claimed in any of the previous returns and the but the ims data will be available for this ims reconciliation from october itself but however when we talk about the to be reconciliation it would be available from april itself so the entire april to uh, like october reconciliation you would be able to do for the to be part for the itc claiming but when we talk about the ims reconciliation the iml data will only be available for the october return but the purchase could be of the previous return as well any purchase which you have not claimed okay <clears throat> what, what my exactly question is the data data what we are uploading uh, for the month of october it does not it may have uh, april month and the gst and to be for the month of april only it has to be look correct it has to look on the april may because the client has been i mean customer has been uploaded their uh, invoice in the month of april only so when i am okay. reconciliation doing for the october month that october data should look april month as well april month to be as well is it possible and how to that uh, reconciliation model uh, model so i have to adjust sure so that yes. will be the two way to be reconciliation part so that has nothing to do with the ims module so ims reconciliation will be uh, happening on set of documents uh, of the ims from uh, october itself so the uh, to be which was part of your april or may will not be part of the ims reconciliation so i'll ask someone from the team to help you out with the to a to be reconciliation so i am relieved that is your query oh uh, yes exactly i i believe this ims is exactly the uh, itc what we can claim in the gst r 3 b right or uh, it is uh, separate activity i'm just not clear because uh, initial initially when you are speaking so, uh, you are, that has been yeah okay so the ims has been come into picture just to freeze your gst r 2 b so previously what was happening that anything which your vendor is filing in the gst r 1 was becoming part of your 2 b at on 14th right so this was a process that you followed uh, till the september return Uh, till sept, uh, like till September's documents, these were this was a set, uh, activity which was happening that anything which a vendor is filing in JSTR one was becoming part of your two B. But from documents pertaining from October first, what ha what is happening is that right, they will be flown to the IMS module. On the IMS module, you will be given an option of accepting, rejecting, or keeping the document in the pending status. So anything which you have accepted or the documents which on which you have not taken any action. Will become your GSTR two B for the next return. Okay, well, so, so this, this GSTR two A just uh, our ITC and GSTR two B reconciliations. What we are doing offline or online that will be continued still, right? Yes, yes. 
just that you will be given an option to be, decide the do, set of documents which should be part of your GSTR 2 p Okay, we'll get back to you in a separate session, in a separate link. I'll contact okay. you. I need more clarity yes. on this. Thank you. Yes, 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 welcome. Uh, yes, Surendra. Uh, Surendra, you can unmute yourself. Hello. Oh, uh, this is Surya Khan. Uh, okay, so my curious, this is related to uh, this uh, settings in IMS portal. Okay, so uh, uh, in case uh, we have updated about the settings in uh, admin uh, user, so it is, is this possible to uh, upload these uh, settings for other users or, or we need to do these uh, settings in uh, individual users? Hello, am I audible? Uh, yes, yes, Urakant. Uh, I was saying that, uh, so he was sticking on mute. Uh, so I was saying that this is a one-time activity. So the admin user will have to make the changes in the uh, portal. So it, uh, and it will be reflected on all the users and location. So user by user, they do not have to do the settings. Uh, yes, Palani. Uh, Palani, you can unmute yourself. Uh, yes, Rashmika. Hello. Uh, yes, Reshma. Uh, yes. Uh, so there are two questions here. Uh, okay. uh, we have joined a little late. Uh, the, your colleague has said that uh, currently the reverse charge invoices will not be reflecting in the uh, IMS portal. Is that true? Yes, yes, they won't be. They won't be. Okay. Uh, now the mm -hmm. second question is like this. Uh, suppose there are 100 invoices which have come in the my uh, I, GSTR 2A IMS and uh, in that I have taken, uh, I have accepted all 100 invoices. But later on, uh, the vendor uh, has uh, modified five invoices in his, uh, mm -hmm. while filing the GSTR 1 return and mm -hmm. uh, all other invoices have been properly filed by the uh, all the all these uh, relevant vendors so in that case mm -hmm. between 14 to 20 uh, mm -hmm. what am, am i supposed to do regarding those five invoices and do i have any action to be taken regarding those 95 invoices which i have accepted and uh, the vendor has also filed it correctly or th there could be any uh, uh, exceptional cases like that Okay, so uh, to answer two questions, so the five set of documents, right? On uh, 10th, you might okay. have accepted it, but on, in, on 11th, while he has filed his return, he might have changed something in the document. Okay. So to you know, identify those documents, that those five documents will be fallen under the altered section here. So here where you see the accepted altered sign will be available. So you'll be able to identify that those five set of documents on sickness. So the rest, it is up to you whether you want to accept or reject or keep those documents in pending before you file your mm -hmm. So that option is available yes. uh, for you to take. And the 95 documents which are already accepted, you can go ahead and file uh, the 3B if you are okay with it or you can keep it in pending or reject those documents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, was that clear? Uh, you, uh, uh, in between, I got some other calls, so you, uh, we could not hear you completely. So can you please repeat again? Okay. No, no, I was saying that the five documents, right, which are already accepted, but during the filing, he, the vendor must have changed some uh, values and must have filed his return. So those set, five yes. set of documents will be available in the alter section here. You'll be able to identify those documents on Signet. Rest, it is up to you whether you wish to accept or reject or keep those documents in pending before you file your GSTR CV. So you'll be given okay. that option of rejecting or keeping it in pending. And the 90 documents which are already accepted and the vendor has correctly filed it, it is up to you whether you want to go ahead and you know claim the ITC or you want to reject or keep it in pending. So after uh, GSTR to be uh, freezing also, I can uh, either accept or reject till the filing yes, of yes. GSTR 3 period. Correct, correct. Yes, yes. 
Oh, Till you okay. file your three B, you have an option of you know changing the section and generating the two B on demand. Okay, and then now one uh, last question. Uh, suppose there are ninety five invoices which are uh, totally acceptable to me, but uh, against those ninety five invoices, I have made JRN only for fifty invoices. So regarding those fifty invoices, only because I have not made the JRN, still I can keep mm -hmm. them as uh, accepted and uh, claim the credit only for fifty invoices which are uh, for which I have made the JRN. That is possible, na? No? Yes, yes, you can accept it and you can reverse it in 4B2 as well. If uh, the in the 2K reconciliation, ah, it is temporary not reversal. Your budget, temporary reversal you can do. And or in the IMS, you can keep it those documents in pending. You have both the options available. It is advisable okay. to keep such transactions as pending. If you have not made a GRN, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. transaction is only in your GS in your IMS, but not in your PR. In that mm -hmm. case, Accepting that transaction and making a temporary reversal then defeats the purpose of IMS. It is advisable that these transactions are kept pending. So it will not flow to your I, uh, GST at 2B. And because it doesn't flow to your GST at 2B, there is no requirement of making a temporary reversal. They will be parked in the IMS as a filter. The moment you right. have your I, uh, the moment you have your GRN, the when then you upload your PR, anyways, because it's pending, it will be there in IMS only. So it will keep uh, appearing in IMS till it is reconciled, till you accept or reject it. So pending transactions are there in I, uh, the IMS. You upload your uh, transactions once GRN is done, it will be matched and then you can uh, do accept or reject. So transactions which are not there in your PR and which are there in 2B ideally should be parked as pending. That is the best yeah, practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. I got it. You have explained it at the time of uh, the setting for this IMS. Yes, I got it. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, Rajnika? No, no. Okay, all right. Uh, yes, Nikhil. Uh, Nikhil, uh, you can unmute yourself. Hello, no audible? Yes, yes, you are. Yeah, so I had a question regarding the change in the IMS uh, return period. For example, like you mentioned, the in on 10th, the invoices are showing in IMS, but the party uh, did not file his return on time. So it has not been generated in 2B. So will it flow to the next month of IMS or will it continue in the same month? No, in case uh, the return has been filed post 11, that is the due date, yeah. it will be flown to IMS. You will be able to take actions on it. However, the 2K will be generated for the next return, not for the current. So the, the, so the, the GST uh, to be generated on demand will not consider that invoice, right? Uh, no, yes. The, if you could just elaborate. Yeah, so, so uh, Nikhil, your, your point is correct. If, let's say, the, the invoice was... You could see the invoice on the 10th, you accepted it, but the supplier filed the return on the 12th. Okay. That transaction stays there in IMS. It doesn't flow to the GSTR 2B. I think one thing has to be clarified here is that IMS uh, has a, a cumulative data. It is not maintained on a month-wise basis. So whatever October month, uh, so let's say right now on till the 8th of, we are on 8th of November today. All the invoices which have been generated from 1st of October till date, either for the month of October or even for the month of November, if let's say today an invoice is generated of the 8th of November, it will still get reflected in your IMS before the 11th as well. But transactions which are for the month of October and are accepted, those transactions move to the IMS. Once a GSTR 3B is filed, all the transactions, accepted and rejected transactions move out of the IMS. Only the pending transactions and there are three types of transactions which remain in the IMS. Number one, the transactions which you had kept pending for which the returns were filed in time. Number two, transactions on which any action was taken, but the returns were filed after the due date. And number three, the transactions even uh, and in the second scenario, it would also include the transactions which are reported through GSTR 1A, which is after the due date. And the third scenario would be the fresh transactions for the current month which have been uploaded in IMS. IMS is a cumulative statement. It will have all the data 
uh, I mean, it keep it will keep having all the data. The moment you accept reject, it flows to 2B. And when you file your GSTR 3B, they accept and reject transactions, move out of it for those transactions for which return has been filed. Does, does that answer your question, Nikhil? Yes, yes, it does. Yeah. So one other okay. question about your portal is, uh, does your portal mention any 2B return period in the IMS portal? Like the return period month, does it filter out? Like this IMS portal is documentative, right? So does your portal has a option of? It shows the return period. I think it's there on the screen. Return, yes. The CP return period, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So another question I had, one question was regarding the outward side of IMS. If uh, any parties are rejected by invoices, where will I able to see that in the next portal? And uh, if they accepted it or pending, one is pending, will I be able to see it in my sales data? So the supplier uh, so, view, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so the supplier view will be available on Signet in the sales model. We are working on the functionality. Wherein, if your vendor must have rejected or accepted or whatever action he has taken against the document, will be soon available in the GSTR, uh, no, the sales module as well. Okay. Currently, it is not available. So currently, it is available. No, currently, it is not. Oh. Okay. Uh, you were adding something. It, it has not been made available even by the GSTN as yet. They are also working on it. So right. once we have more clarity from GSTN on it, we'll be able to make it live. The supplier view is not even available on the GSTN as of now. Yes, yes that's a summary view. I, well, I know that currently we don't have any cases of that. Correct, correct. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes, Jonathan. Uh, can you hear us? Janki uh, Balaji, your line has been unmuted. You can unmute yourself and ask the question. Janik, if you're speaking, we cannot hear you. I believe your mic has been unmuted, but we are not able to hear you. Yep, maybe Janki, you can type your uh, question in the chat box. We'll have a look at it. Uh, yes, Harul. Hi, uh, regarding these ineligible invoices. So we have some ineligible invoices. Is my voice audible? Yes, Hello? yes, it is. Yeah, regarding ineligible invoices, uh, it it is a, now is a, it is a, it is showing is a reversal in this IMS portal, whereas we are not accounted those invoices in our books. So that means that uh, in earlier clarification also we confirmed that we can show that it credit invoices in. Uh, our uh, register as avail available, then it is subsequently it will be uh, it's a reversal, though net effect is zero. But my concern is that we are not at all accounted those invoices in our books. So we need to add those invoices in our purchase register for uploading purpose. So if the IT. Yeah, it's regarding IT. Yes, it's, so. That is not eligible. Uh, uh, yeah, for... if it is not eligible based on the GST, like on the 2B, if it is not available, then it will be directly flown to your 4D2. You do not have to upload your purchase. But if no, the no, no, I think these, these no, no. ineligible that we are talking about are not the ones. Uh, which are place of supply mismatch or the ones that are up uploaded after the due date. I think what he's talking about is the ineligible credit like rent, a cab or hotel expenses. Ah, yeah, this, uh, it is an industry related. practice that because the credit is ineligible, nobody books the uh, expenses, uh, the GST amount separately and the entire amount under uh, the uh, basic amount plus GST of... is booked as an expense. Yeah. But again, I mean, if you do that right now, also you are not able to reconcile it. Whatever you are doing right now, you'll have to follow the same thing by vendor. If you are aware that this is your vendor, you have to accept it and then it goes to your GSTR 2B and then you do a permanent reversal. 
at rejecting those transactions is not allowed i mean is is not uh, advisable uh, having said that uh, it is still i mean uh, the way the government has been asking the data and they are looking into it it is advisable that uh, people start recording the gst amounts for these kind of ineligible credit as well as i mentioned earlier this is also a requirement under the income tax act if you are not maintaining these details then probably you will also face problems when your tax auditor asks you the data uh, for uh, clause 44 so i think the best way to look at it is start recording the expenses along with gst and then pass a jv uh, to take these expenses as an ineligible uh, credit rather than straight away booking it as expense but if you have booked it as an expense there is no way reconciliation is happening and there is no way you can do an auto except these are all transactions will stay in only in ims because your pr transaction is not there in that case uh, you will have to probably manually accept and then do a permanent reversal that that's the only way out so concern is that my concern is that if they flowing those invoices so directly it will go ineligible right it will not show whether his supplier is going to accept or not accept right in this ims portal sorry if you in this ims portal mm -hmm. what are these ineligible invoices uh -huh. it will be classified as uh, it is will be grouped as uh, ineligible only directly no, so on, no no only two transactions are going to be mapped as ineligible and will flow directly to gstr 2b okay. those transactions are where the invoice has been uploaded after due date so let's say for the financial year 23 24 if the invoice is being uploaded after 30th of november okay. or in case the invoice is raised on your let's say karnataka location but the place of supply pos has been mentioned as maharashtra Right okay. now, also these transactions appear as ineligible in your GSTR 2B. Only these transactions will not flow to IMS, and they these will flow directly to your uh, GSTR 2B. But the other ineligible credit, which is blocked credit under Section 17.5, these yeah. transactions are not going to be marked as ineligible in the IMS. Okay. You will have to accept it and then uh, do a permanent reversal of these transactions. System oh. is not going to mark it as ineligible. Okay, got it. Okay, and okay, got it. And another one is that <clears throat> as an industry practice, uh, we have reached that price we have issued to our uh, supplier. Suppose 100 rupees. Immediately, the supplier raises invoices for 100. Whereas in my systems, the PO price is not updated. So, therefore, it's old price, supposed to be 90 rupees only reflected. So, what we are doing here now, though invoices are 100 rupees, as per my books, as per my books, the PO price is only 90. We are accounting 90 rupees only. I'm saying this. Uh, now procedure we are following. So we are mm -hmm. availing 90 rupees. Further, when we, that PO prices are amended, the 10 rupees again we will uh, accounted in the books. Again, the 10 rupees we are accounted manually and reconcile it manual to be. But now in IMS, what we need to do? We need to wait uh, still uh, this uh, PO prices to amend in our books. Based on that only, we need to take credit. By the time we need to hold those invoices, supplier invoices. That's that's the ideal way of uh, looking at it. If the transaction uh, is not matching between your PR entry and IMS, yeah. it has to uh, go to pending. Okay, other we need to okay need to I mean if it is our end, then we need to correct it everything. Then we need to account it. Right. That's the best way. All yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Yeah. I think Palani ji is ready to ask the question. Uh, can you please unmute yourself? Uh, let Let us see. Yeah, the mic is allowed to you. Please try and unmute and ask your question. Okay, I, I think probably there is some issue, uh, technical issue. Maybe you can write, type your question into the chat box and we'll try to answer. Rajmohan, uh, I can ask you a question. Yes, madam. Uh... Whether any summary level, uh, how much invoices are uh, accepted, how many invoices are pending, how many uh, values are pending, any report is available with Signal? So we have the count available. So you can see the documents which are in the no action pending or rejected status. Okay, so and also only. we have given different count only but however if you wish to see the document level details or the summary we have an option here you can come to the reconciliation module and you can simply uh bifurcate with, with the action if we want to filter the documents which are in no action you can simply uh you know filter it in the actions filter and you can download the excel from here
Okay, thank you. Uh, mm. Ma'am. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, in this uh, IMS, uh, what are the accept things are there? Ma'am? There. So that will be plotted in 3B automatically in a uh, signet. Uh, uh, so, uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you properly. Actually, in 3B, uh, return filing now, ma'am. The accept uh, related uh, things, uh, the uh -huh. automatically amount will be summarized there in 3B. So the transactions that are accepted in IMS flow to GSTR 2B. And whatever transactions are there in your GSTR 2B, uh, if you're using our system right now, I think probably you'll have to uh, do the uh, put the claim month. Once you do that, it will flow to the GSTR 3B. I think that is what the question is. Yeah, thanks, sir. Yeah, so you will have to set a claim month for these transactions after you accept it, and then it will move to 3B. Uh, Reshma, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So the yes, yes. So you are. Uh, 2B will be freeze in the IMS module. However, if you wish to populate the value in the 3B return, you will have to do the uh, reconciliation again and put the claim in the uh, to GSTR 2A 2B reconciliation module. So, these are completely so the, two separate modules. So, IMS is used for freezing your 2B and the reconciliation module is used for your GSTR 3B claiming. But then whatever reconciliation you do in your IMS, the reconciliation status is going to be fetched in GSTR 2B. So only those reverse charge and import transactions, you will have to do the reconciliation again. The reconciliation that has been done in IMS need not be done again in GSTR 2B. All right. Vishma Janki uh, has asked the question in chat. I don't know if that has been answered or okay. not. Is there API interface enabled for purchase in IMS? Yes, yes. So we have enabled the IMS wherein you can pull back the IMS data into your ERP and the purchase for uploading the purchase as well. We have the APIs available. Uh, any other questions? Can I ask one question, please? Hello? Uh, yes, Raj. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Raj. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I observe that this IMS uh, uh, system is uh, uh, cumulative data, right? Cumulative. There is any cutoff date for uh, like in to be like that in the uh, data in IMS. For example, I'm saying that uh, we have started after 11. I mean, it, it will be reflected in cumulative. So we'll start a reconciliation. This any cutoff date for us uh, standard data for the particular month like that. Or continuously till 19th or till 20th, we can reconcile or flowing the data from uh, JSTR1 to this IMS portal. Uh, uh, so once the return, like oh no, if the vendor has uploaded post 11th as well for the current period, if they have uploaded, okay. it will be flown to the IMS module. And but the JSTR 2B freezing will be done for the previous period itself until you file the JSTR 3B for the return in the next year, but in the okay. That means that suppose the supplier is filed the return, suppose in the 15th. So 15th, the, again, this data will flowing this uh, from JSTR 1 to their JSTR 1 to the IMS portal, right? Still 15th, though the supplier filing. Yeah, they file on 15th, that is after the due date, it is flown to the IMS. You can take the actions in the IMS, but however, the 2B will be filled only for the next return. You cannot claim it in that uh, JSTR 3B return. Oh, that means that those invoices not reflecting in this IMS portal after, I mean, 15th. Suppose the supplier is unloaded. Uh, no, it will be reflected. Yes, you are saying that question. Your, let me just rephrase your question. Your question is your vendor has filed the return on 15th and yeah. whether the data will flow to the IMS or not, right? Yeah, in this part, yeah, yes, correct. No, no. Suppose, yes. Yes, it will be flown to the IMS. You will be able to take the action. However, the 2B will be generated for the uh, next, that's for the December return, the 2B will be generated. If you cannot claim the ITC, or the 2B will not be generated for the November return. When you so file the DST, uh, then... Hmm? No, no, my point is that still your 15th is there. So I could be flowing in this IMS portal. Then I noticed that, then I can accept that. Then only it will go to the 2B, mm -hmm. right? Reshma, right. can you open the, uh, the PPT with the flowchart? Yes, yes. 
So, sir, understood your question. Let me try yeah, and clarify. Yeah, yeah. Because of it is continuously is going until in two exactly. B there is a cut off date is there like correct, that in IMS. So both yeah. both will have to be seen. Number one, there is no cut off for IMS. Okay, it's a live data. If you see the the first part of our chart, as soon as your supplier uploads an e invoice, generates an e invoice, the data flows into the IMS. You will be able to see the data in IMS. You will be able to take action in the IMS. Now, if he's not covered under uh, e invoicing, let's say he goes and uploads all the GSTR one data on the tenth of the month, and then does the filing later on, probably on eleventh or twelfth or whatever. In that case, also as soon as he goes and saves the data in GSTR one, it will appear in your IMS. Okay, and that IMS is live. Now what happens is, if he files the return by the eleventh of the month, that transactions, whatever transaction you have accepted, there has to be two conditions which has to be checked. Number one, it has to be accepted, and number two, it has to be the return has also to be filed by the fourteenth. If any of the condition is not been fulfilled either you have not accepted you have kept it pending or you have rejected it or rejected also goes to gstr 2b but in the rejected uh, portion now if you have accepted but he has not filed the gstr 2b on 11th it's it is there in ims but it does not flow to the gstr 2b of this month so the, on the let's say the invoice was of october uh, it 30th of october he raised the invoice you are able to see it right now in ims you accepted it but he filed the gstr 1 on the 12th of the month this transaction will move to the gstr 2b on the 14th that is generated on 14th of december not the gstr 2b that is generated on 14th of november similarly when you said that my supplier has uploaded the invoice on the 15th of november yes. if the invoice is of the month of october if it is uploaded in ima if it is uploaded in the e invoice portal or gstr1 on whatever if it it is uploaded on 15th of the month you will be able to see it on ims you can accept it but it will flow to the gstr to be in the month of december next month because he has not filed the return okay, by the 11th okay now got it now got in that yeah. that means that the to be is restricted still is live still only the ms days. portal is this uh, transferring the invoices Correct. from particular month right so ims is okay. only a filter which is there between uh, no, no, uh, before uh, okay. gst or to be okay now yeah. got it just okay. to be is still is the cut off date is the same thing is continue for ims also Absolutely. correct sir or yes. right. thank you lot yes. thank you most welcome yeah, yeah. thanks for this Uh, any other questions? So, uh, Janki, the ideal timing to accept uh, e-invoice transaction can be on a uh, real-time basis. You can do it because ideally and. or legally uh, transactions which has been reported under e invoice that cannot be changed or modified if after 24 hour, either you can cancel it if it is within 24 hours or uh, you can uh, issue a corresponding credit note so e invoice data can be uh, ideally uh, uh, you know the accept reject can be done on a real time basis the only catch here is that if uh, the supplier at the end of the month on the 11th replaces all the transactions of his uh, so whenever an e invoice is generated the gstr1 gets auto populated on the basis of e invoicing now at the end of the month the supplier has the option to delete all these transactions and push the entire purchase register afresh if this is what your supplier does on the 11th whatever actions you have taken before it those actions will get reset but we are seeing certain transactions we we provide managed services to a lot of our clients until these till now the clients were saying that we don't want to rely on the auto populated data you replace uh, all the transactions at the end of the month but having realized that ims is going to behave like this now what people are doing is if there is a mistake or some transactions have not been reported only the uh, different share all the delta is being uploaded right now and the e invoice transactions is being kept as such so ideally there should not be a problem but if your suppliers are doing these kind of uh, following these practices to delete the, all the e invoice transactions altogether and then uploading the data fresh the invoice number doesn't change but these transactions do not have the irn number and we have clarified this with gstn the gstn is going to consider these transactions as altered so even if you have taken the action these transactions would go and sit into the altered scenario but in any case 
I think after the 11th, the 12th or 13th should be the best time that uh, you should be doing the reconciliation without waiting of uh, generation of GST or 2B. I think uh, that that uh, should answer the question. Thank you. Uh, so, if any of you has any queries, please raise your hand. Uh, yes, Mahesh. So, uh, my question is that uh, if we have accept or reject or uh, uh, doing the pending action, so in this case, it is impacted to 2A or only for the 2B work. Sorry, because uh, because except uh, reject uh, is going to affect only GSTR 2B, not GSTR 2A. IMS will only affect GSTR 2B, not GSTR uh -huh. 2A. Uh, so means uh, 2A means that data will be continue the flow. Uh, means what we are taking the actions uh, that uh, that not come any impact on uh, 2A. That data is continuously 2A, yes. So T two A is in oh. only as a facilitation matter as of now because as per the law they have the the section sixteen two double A says that whenever yeah. a transaction yeah. is uploaded and it is appearing in your two B then only you can take the credit. So two A is only yes. it is a it is a dynamic form. It keeps getting I mean it get keeps getting populated on the basis of returns filed by your supplier. So two A uh, uh, GSTR. Uh, uh, IMS does not have any impact on 2A. 2A gets generated as it is, whatever uploads or invoices are uploaded by your supplier, whether he files the return or not, it gets there on your GSTR 2A and the status uh, keeps on appearing there. Uh, the only impact GSTR uh, IMS has is on uh, uh, GSTR 2B. 2A will remain as it is, as of now. Uh, and uh, when our annual audit uh, means uh, that the nine uh, nine in table eight when the figures are appear that time we have, uh, where should it can be captured is from two A or two B? Till now it was being done on GSTR two A, but this year uh, they have issued an advisory, sir, for uh, the year twenty three twenty four when your table eight is generated. Uh, the government has said that that will be also on the basis of two B only, not two A. They have issued this advisory. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? So if there are no further questions, we can wind up with the session. So uh, on a trial basis for all subscribers, we have enabled the IMS functionality for a month. So you can just uh, no, review the module. If you have any queries or questions, you can reach out to your respective account managers. They will be helping out with the training session or know how to use the module. So if uh, any questions, you can raise your hand or else we can end the, uh, wind up with the session. All right. Uh, thank you all for joining. Bye.